evening, beautiful people. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another week of Before I Sleep, a daily evening devotional to help us grow closer to God. I am so excited about this week because we are talking about growing closer to God. And that is the tagline of this podcast, which was very intentional because when you show up here, when you listen, when you watch, I really want you to walk away saying, I want to be closer to God. I need to be closer to God. I want your prayer to be God. I want to be closer to you. And even for myself, as I am sitting here and sharing from my own posture of surrender and submission, it is also drawing me closer and closer to God. So I am very excited about this week. And today specifically, we are going to be speaking about prayer. What is prayer? In simple terms, it is communication with God and our prayer life is such a vital part of our relationship with God. Whenever you are building a relationship with anybody, you know, the most important part is always communication. That's how you build intimacy. And the more that you communicate with that person, the closer you are to them the more you understand them, the more you trust them. It's all about the communication that you build with them. And as I was preparing for this episode, I was reminded of my prayer walks that I used to have with God. And this was back when I was in high school. And as a teenager, that's when I was really trying to form a relationship with God. I was trying to understand God. I was trying to know who is this God. And it was really at a really dark point of my life where I started to have these talks with God. And it always occurred during my morning walk to the bus stop. <laughs> it wasn't something that I planned, but that's when I would open myself up and I would share my heart with God. So early in the morning, I think I had to leave the house around like 6 a.m. every morning to catch the bus to go to school. And I would just talk to God. And then eventually, whenever I was walking, if I was, you know, walking to work in the afternoon or walking back home, um, just anytime I found myself on a long walk, I would use that time to speak with God. And I noticed over time that I started to feel a peace that I didn't feel before. I started to experience a joy that I didn't experience before. And I became more sensitive to the voice of God. And that is what prayer does. That is what communicating with God does does. It draws you closer to him so that you can know his voice, so that you can understand his word. That is what God wants for us as our father. That's what he wants for us as his children. Now, something that has always, you know, interested me is the Lord's prayer. So let's go ahead and read it. So I'm going to read the New Living Translation. And this is from Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15. This is Jesus speaking. Pray like this, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. I always thought about this because... um, I think there are different opinions about the Lord's prayer. And I think sometimes people can get so rigid when it comes to the teachings of God. And I think some people would look at this and think, okay, this is exactly how we should pray every time we pray 
to God. We need to say this specific prayer. And I have really just been reflecting on this. And I really feel like when Jesus was teaching on prayer, I think that God is revealing to us the heartbeat of prayer. So when we break this down, the very first line says, begins with our father. Now, father, the very first thing that we say, we are acknowledging who God is and who he is to us. Some of the definitions for father are the originator and transmitter of anything, a title of honor, and my favorite one, one who has infused his own spirit into others. Isn't that just remarkable because we are created in the image of God? (laughs) Now, moving on. So it begins, our father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Remember, we spoke about holiness a few weeks ago. And what does that mean? It means to be set apart. So we are reverencing God when we say that you are holy, your kingdom come, your kingdom is the righteous kingdom. It is your purpose to establish your kingdom here on earth. Moving on, next we say, give us today the food we need. So when we say give, we acknowledge that God is our provider. And the very next thing, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. We know we need forgiveness. We know that we all fall short. We also know that we need to forgive others. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Deliver us from temptation. We know that we will be tempted, but you will provide a way out. You are the deliverer. This is the blueprint if you will, for our prayer life. The heartbeat of our prayer life is a declaration that we need God. Prayer is surrender. Prayer is submission. And what really blessed me today is Jesus's continuation of the teaching on prayer, because we often stop there. You know, we read the Lord's prayer and we're like, okay, let's pray like this. But Jesus continues the teaching. So let's go through to Luke chapter 11, starting with verse five. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom. Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Now, this really stood out to me because persistence has been the word for my life. (laughs) I have had to persevere through a lot of things. Verse nine. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. God wants us to be dependent on him and him alone. Don't be ashamed to ask God because he is your father. And that doesn't mean that he will always give you what you ask for, but he will always give you what you need. I think that God trains us in persistence because shame will cause us to seek answers in the world, to seek solutions and identity outside of him. But no, God says to seek him with shameless persistence. Can you imagine going up to someone's door, 
knocking and you ask for something and they say no, they won't even open the door for you. They're yelling at you and you keep knocking and knocking. Eventually you start to feel like, oh, maybe this isn't nice. Maybe I'm annoying them. Maybe I'm bothering them. You know, maybe I should just walk away. But God says, no, keep your eye on me. Be persistent. Keep seeking me. I don't want you to turn around. I don't want you to feel shame. I am your father. I am the answer, but I need you to learn to trust me. Keep seeking God. Oh, that is such a good lesson. Wasn't even like the real lesson of today, (laughs) but such a good lesson. And I also think that this points to why it is so important to have the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 26 and 27. In the same way, the spirit also helps us in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We need the Holy Spirit. And to receive the Holy Spirit, we need to receive God. We need to declare that God is Lord over our lives, that God is Lord over our hearts. Prayer is literally a posture of surrender. It is a posture of submission. I know that God is my source. I know that God is my creator. So I want to go to him for all things. I want to seek him in all things. When I'm happy, I want to turn to him. When I'm sad, I want to be comforted by him. When I'm confused, I want to be led by him. When I'm wrong, I want to be corrected by him. God is my source in everything. Even when we are mad at God, because let's be honest, sometimes we get mad at God. We don't understand what's happening. God, why did you do this? God, why did you allow this to happen? We get mad. Even when we are mad, turn to God. And as a mother, I understand this so well because I have a four-year-old daughter And there are times when I correct her or I tell her no, and she's upset with me and she cries. But even in that moment of disappointment, she runs to me. She wraps her arms around me. She sobs. She comes to me for comfort, even when I am the one that causes her discomfort. Even when I am the one that causes her discomfort, she runs to me for comfort. So even when God is stretching you, when God is pruning you, when God is correcting you, still run to God because he is your father. (sighs) Prayer is so important. And it isn't just words that we speak, but it is worship. It is reverence. It is surrender. It is submission. Lord, thank you that you allow us to pray to you. That you allow us to seek you who is holy. Lord, you are the source of everything. You are the source of our lives. You are the creator. You are father. We call you Abba Father. So Lord, when we start to stray, correct us, pull us back, remind us of who you are, remind us of whose we are. We belong to you. Help us to lean on you and only you. Strengthen our prayer life, Lord. Where we lack belief, give us belief so that we know who to seek. We know to seek you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stay connected. 
visit the website at tamirajmorris.com backslash before I sleep devotional. Sign up for the newsletter so you never miss an update, including Sabbath weekly. Also join the wait list for the before I sleep journal.